Thanks for tuning in to our winter edition of a NASCAR Cup Series preview for the 2025 season here on ProLine TV. Greg DePalma here. And of course, that means if we're talking NASCAR auto racing, CJ Radun from RotoWire joins us once again, one last time for 2024. How's it going, CJ? It's going well. Good to be back to talk about the happenings in the off season. Yes, uh, we've been talking a lot of F1 for the past month, ever since the NASCAR season ended in uh, controversial fashion. Uh, there'll be a lot of talk on that next year. Uh, we'll have more than enough time to uh, go into that. Uh, and of course, we had our uh, our opinions on it and our final preview or our final recap of the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. But this is about the 2025 season. This is about something that we did not go over. You know, we were going through a lot of changes uh, this season. And so we just figured, you know, it's a lot of people are coming on this on, on our channel and on, watching our videos. And they just want to know what we think about the race. They want to know about the odds and the picks and the trends and all that stuff. And, you know, they, they, they could care less about some of this information. And that's why we figured, well, let's do it in the off season. And so this is the time that we're going to go ahead. And, and since most of these te- actually, since even this, a small percentage of these teams, CJ still have not decided a few things. I mean, most of the drivers and teams are set, but there's still some openings and some decisions to be made. So, um, so let's go ahead and get right into it by first starting. We're going to go manufacture, uh, in alphabetical order. So we're going to start with Chevy. And of course, we're going to start with Hendrick Motorsports. Um, we'll go alphabetically there as well. Uh, and we don't have a whole lot to talk about with Hendrick Motorsports because there are no changes. <laughs> no, uh, it's one of the benefits of when you're a top team and you've got four great drivers and, and teams. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So there's really not much that Hendrick is doing other than just getting ready to um, you know, get ready for 25 and a shot at winning the championship again. I mean, Kyle Larson was fantastic. Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman both stepped up. Uh, so I think there's a lot ahead for Hendrick Motorsports in 2025. And like a lot of pro sports, there is benefit to consistency. So being able to continue that consistency with all the personnel throughout the organization, knowing what they need to improve, I think they're going to be a good spot for 25, but no changes at, at Hendrick. Uh, we will also make sure to go over some early futures at the end of this show because we can't, oh, can't wait. You know, we, yeah, we uh, Kyle, even, two to one. What's that? Kyle Larson, two yeah, to one. Yeah, Kyle Larson, two to one <laughs> to win the championship. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's uh, continue on. Um, actually, you know, let me while we're here, uh, it's probably uh, not a bad time to actually go through it as we're going through each team. Uh, and we're just kidding around when we're, when we say <laughs> two to one for, it's not going to uh, be much different than that. Maybe five to one. We'll see. Yeah. It's uh, you actually hit it on the head there with the five to one. So uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, throw it on the screen now. So everybody can uh, see it with us as we go through each manufacturer. So there it is. Uh, you have Kyle Larson at five to one. You have William Byron at six to one. And then, uh, let's see, Elliot's 11 to one. And Bowman, 35 mm-hmm. to 1. So, Bowman. yeah, out of all these drives, For obviously us. we're not going to recommend anything here. <laughs> it's too early. Yeah. But Elliot would be definitely under consideration at 11 to 1. Now, again, most of these odds are not going to change between now and, and by the time we come back on the air to preview the season in February, more than likely. So that's when we'll – go over our final picks and future plays. But hey, if you're just somebody that would like to make a play now, I think Elliott's solid at 11 to one and Bowman at 35 to one. You agree? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, let me also, let's see. I'll I'll, I'll pop up my board here too. We can use this. So we just went through uh, Hendrick. And next up, uh, let's talk about RCR. Why don't we do that? So RCR uh, does not have any changes with the top two drivers. Kyle and Austin Dillon will be back, correct? That's correct. All right. And let's see. There's Richard Children's Racing right there. Now, uh, there is no third team here yet. So there is a possibility of a third driver? 
Yeah, um, a number of teams, and you'll see that as a theme as we go through the rest of the grid here. Uh, but with um, some of the changes that are happening amongst teams, a lot of them are taking the opportunity to expand to a three-car team, and Childress is one of them. They haven't fully baked out their plans yet, or at least announced them. It looks like they might uh, try to grab a charter or something like that to run a third car periodically. Uh, a number of the other teams that we're going to talk about as the show goes on are expanding the three car teams, and that's really down to the economics of the charter system. And we could talk more about that when we get to some of the other teams. But in order to you know, make enough revenue to cover your overhead costs and actually have enough information and data to go around uh, to really make yourself competitive. Three car teams seem to be the trend and the way to go at this point. So Richard Childress is looking at uh, getting a third charter or at least a third car to run at a part time uh, basis in 2025. Nothing really confirmed at this point, all uh, rumors, but uh, signs are, are looking likely that at least at, for some races next year, Childress will have a third car. Okay. Next, we have Trackhouse. And let's see, let's pop in uh, Trackhouse here. So as you can see there, the big change is the the rookie. And I'm sure he's, he's going to go off as the rookie of the year favorite, I would guess. And that's Shane Van Gisbergen. Uh, because you would think that he'd be able to steal one of those road course races and then that gets him in the playoffs. So Shane Van Gisbergen will join Chastain and Juarez and it looks like Van Gisbergen's crew chief uh, is going to come from Zane Smith uh, and Spire. Is that correct, Steve Doran? Steve Doran, that's correct. Uh, again, trend, track house, going to three-car teams. We knew this earlier in 24, so we knew this before the season ended last year that Van Gisbergen was going to be stepping up. And like you said, um, why not when there are a number of road course races on the calendar? If he can pull one of those off before we get to the playoffs, then he's going to have an entry into the playoffs. And that's a good thing for that organization. So it makes all the sense in the world if they can grab him to go ahead and go for a third car uh, you know, get some more revenue, get into the playoffs, um, reinvest that back into the team. All right. And so uh, between RCR and Trackhouse, uh, let's see. Actually, I probably passed a couple. So between RCR and Trackhouse, uh, let's see. Uh, actually, I surprisingly didn't. So <laughs> nope. Kyle Busch is 22 to 1. <laughs> He's the top driver, even though he didn't win last year. But I guess it can't get any worse for Kyle Busch. So, uh, boy, is this going to be a big year for <clears throat> Kyle and, and uh, Richard Childress, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I think the bigger changes for Childress that they're working on, aside from that third car, really, I think what they need to do is figure out the, the staff at the shop to be able to give Kyle Busch the, the equipment that he needs. Uh, you remember at the beginning of the season, they were way off base. Both cars were. And then they started figuring out where they went yep. by and started catching back up. They just didn't get there fast enough and they weren't able to be consistent enough. And that speaks to me in terms of everything in the team aspect of the sport, not necessarily the driver. So I think from an organizational standpoint, if they can get their cards and pieces right on the board, uh, back in the shop and in the organization, I think Kyle Busch can get back to victory lane. Uh, and certainly Austin Dillon's proven that he can win races as well. So, in fact, he did win one last year, just didn't count for the playoffs. So, Kyle Busch is the top driver between those two teams, odds-wise. And they have Chastain at 30-1. to 1. Now, that's a big number. I'm definitely advising... Look, I'd advise both of them because, like you said, if Kyle get, if Kyle Busch has found something, mm -hmm. uh, and and all of a sudden, you know, we start watching racing in in February and March, and Kyle's got a win right away, well, I'll tell you right now, twenty two to one becomes eight to one Absolutely. with Kyle Busch. Absolutely correct. So Kyle would be a, a definite look. Also, Chastain. I mean, I thought Chastain was one of the top. Uh, I wouldn't really call him sleeper, but kind of. He was like a really yeah. good pick championship pick last year things just did not work out for him so 30 to 1 is a really nice number yeah i think you're getting a discount here on both of these guys because neither of them lived up to what they were able to do in 2023 uh, that doesn't mean that their talents have gone away that doesn't mean that their organizations have gotten worse or anything like that i think it's just meaning that there are a few small changes making if they're able to find what those changes are that they can make and make them in the right direction for 25 i think they'll be right back into victory lane and back into competitiveness for the championship potentially okay and then let's see we find van gisbergen the next driver at 65 to 1 again that's just uh 
That might That's, be. <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> forget it. Don't put your money on Shane Van Gisbergen into win the championship. Don't do if it. If the championship race were a road course, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, host of our look again, championships. Well, host of our, we're going to get to him a little later. Uh, cause we still have Dylan at 150 to one, but again, Austin Dylan winning a championship, not likely, even though I'll tell you right now, I, I I'd much rather, I, I have much more confidence that Austin Dylan will win a championship before Shane Van Gisberg in 2025. So most likely. And then do we pass Suarez? Oh, there he is. 120 to one. So those are your drivers between the two teams that we just checked out. And Daniel Suarez, it's just he's not at that point yet either. I mean, I, I still I still put Suarez over Van Gisbergen, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah, so. I think everybody that we're talking about are potential race winners. Um, one or two, you know, two at the high end. Maybe Chastain, if he goes on a run, can get a few more, go a little bit further deep into the playoffs. But um, when you're talking about going up against Penske, Gibbs, uh, Hendrick Motorsports, etc., gets really tight really fast. Okay, so one more to go at Chevy. Actually, two more to go. We've got Spire and Colleg. So let's uh, let's go Colleg here. We've got Ty Dillon. Where am I? Let's get this up here. So I've got Ty Dillon and AJ Allmendinger. Now, what's important here to note is that they were both in Colleg last year. But now, instead of having two or three other drivers part-time and it's kind of a mess, one of those messy boards, it, no more messy board as of right now. As of right now, it's just Ty Dillon, A.G. Allmendinger, full-time rides. That is correct. Allmendinger making the step back up from Xfinity. He had taken the step back down last year, uh, made it all the way to the finale at, at Phoenix, uh, ready to come back and try it again in the Cup Series. And I think that's a good move. You know, uh, Allmendinger has proven his worth um, in multiple series yeah. throughout his career. He's a Cup race winner. No reason why he can't do it on both ovals as well as road courses. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Plus, another reason. Um, that I talked about before with Hendrick that gives the team continuity and consistency going into 25 as well. They've been working together for a very long time uh, and keeping uh, Dylan there as well. Uh, good for them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's a sponsor thing, but good for Ty Dylan. Yeah. I mean, uh, any, I mean, the way statistically speaking, he doesn't deserve it, but yep. look, he's with call like, like he's with Hendrick motorsports. So <laughs> Tell you that uh, is not a sponsor decision either. That would be a decision purely on the driver, unless he's bringing money to the team great. from his family. Because the sponsor for Dylan is going to be Leaf Leaf Filter, which is uh, another company that's owned by Colleg himself. So, okay, uh, and unless Dylan's bringing money to the table from somewhere else, uh, it seems like it's pure driver's decision. And Daniel Hamrick is gone, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he is in truck. He is moving to the truck series full time in 2025. That's correct. All right. And Van Gisbergen, of course, is also, um, he was one of those part timers that's uh, got the full time ride. And then Spire, uh, we're going to close it out here at Chevy with Spire. And we have uh, a new driver, as you can see there. And that is Mr. Michael McDowell has joined Spire Motorsports, uh, who was, uh, Michael was really good last year. And he was like one of the unheralded, uh, qualifiers of 2024 so if, if you could put any wagers on anything hey you know uh, who has the best statistics during uh, the 2025 season for qualifying or something like that and you want to pick someone that nobody is probably going to pick take uh, michael mcdowell so uh but he's got to translate that obviously to the to the races and that's the next step uh, it seems like maybe another year can do it, and maybe Spire is the uh, the team that can help him along with that. Justin Haley is a teammate, and Justin Haley um, stays here. But the, the 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 new deal with Justin Haley is, and and this is a great deal for Justin Haley. Uh, he gets uh, uh, Childers uh, as a crew chief. I mean, that's uh, that that right there. I mean, I, I think if I'm Spire Motorsports, maybe that's the the sleeper team to watch because again, maybe McDowell is ready to take a next step. Justin Haley to bump up with the crew chief. And we know Carson Hosevar had some really good moments last year. 
I was really impressed with Hosevar and Spire Motorsports throughout 24. Hosevar came on in the second half of the season. Obviously, he was a rookie last year, first time in the series full time. Justin Haley is a prior race winner. You saw how we all talked about how good he was at Chicago uh, when he was chasing down Van Gisbergen as well. Uh, so I think the potential is there. I think this team has the speed. They've got Hendrick uh, engines. Rodney Childers is somebody who's who knows how to organize, knows how to crew chief. He signed a multi-year deal uh, late in 24 to uh, take over as crew chief for Haley uh, at this organization starting in 2025 for the full season. So that's nothing to sneeze at. I think um, this might be actually a sleeper team for 25. Uh, certainly for one-off wins, uh, we might be able to see multi multiple drivers of theirs getting into victory lane next year. All right. So that is Chevy. Uh, let's see. Where are we? There we go. Let's now move on and go to Ford. All right. At Ford. <laughs> What's that? There's a lot happening at Ford. Yeah. Let's start with RF. Let's actually start with, uh, you know what? Let's, let's start with uh, RFK. Why don't we do that? So RFK has a new driver, as you can see. Uh, Kozlowski's back, Busher's back, but now Ryan Priest steps in as one of the four drivers that come from Stuart Haas. That's the, one of the big stories of the offseason, no more Stuart Haas. So they had four of drivers that had to find work elsewhere. Ryan Priest was one of them. And look, Ryan Priest, very fortunate to have found a full-time job again. No question about it. Uh, so sort of like Ty Dillon, there's some respect there, obviously, and good for him. Uh, well, uh, but this has got to be it now. It's time to step up, see if he can do that. Uh, but the other big change is the fact that uh, Kozlowski uh, reunites uh, with his former crew chief. Yeah, a lot of good changes at RFK. I think they found out what was ailing them from 23 and fixed that for 24. Both uh, Busher and Kozlowski had really good seasons. And for all the reasons that I talked about earlier in terms of having a third car, being able to share more information to make yourselves more competitive as well as cover the overhead. That's exactly what RFK is doing here. <clears throat> and uh, they are leasing one of the charters from Rick Ware, Rick Ware Racing. And that's gonna be Ryan Priest in number 60 going forward. And, and again, that's a, a driver decision um, on the part of Keselowski and the ownership there. Uh, Priest obviously has been around. He's been pretty successful in the junior series. Uh, or the latter series, I don't want to ne necessarily call them junior series, but he's had success in things other than Cup. Um, he's got to find it, like you said, in Cup now, though. Uh, he had an opportunity at Stuart Haas. It didn't really amount to much. We'll see what they're able to do at RFK, hopefully with Keselowski and Busher finding success as they did in 24. Hopefully that's able to boost Ryan Priest in the finishing order in a lot of races coming up here in 25. Okay, now I have to ask it because this is, I don't know what to expect, but first of all, what is the Haas factory team? Haas factory team is the, the remnants of Stuart Haas. It's Gene Haas wanting to stay in the sport in some form or fashion. And so, okay, we'll keep one, one car going and we'll bring up Cole Custer from Xfinity, uh, obviously a former cup driver as well. Um, so he'll come back to the new look, slim down on a diet, Stuart Haas racing, now just called Haas. Okay. Now, uh, Custer, who did not have success his he, first go around. Did, did he win one race? He, he did. Yes. Win, if I remember. Yes. Yeah. He's got the one win. 12 top tens here. The win. Uh, let's see. Where was it? Uh, that was... Does it say it here? Here it is, Kentucky. There you go. Okay, he's got the Kentucky win. Then he went back into the Xfinity series and did really well. Absolutely. And that's, I was, you know, so you're always happy to see that. So he was part of the champion. Was he part of the championship race? Absolutely. Yeah. Where was he? How did he, where did he finish? Do you remember? I, I cannot remember. Um, to be honest with you, I'd have to look it okay. up. Let's see. Might even have it here. Let's see. Well, there's Custer in there, but we got to see practice, qualifying results. Here we go. Race results. Give me a finish. Uh, Custer, where was he? Eighth. 
there you go. There's eighth in the race. Anyway, good year for Cole Custer. And he is now all alone, but he don't care. He's just happy <laughs> that he's in NASCAR. Cup. Back in cup, exactly. Yeah, good for him. And let's see what happens. You just never know. So, and and look, it's it's got a name. So we'll see. All right, next up. Let's go to uh, Penske. And there you see Penske right there. What a surprise. No changes. <laughs> Yet again, when you're winning, no need to change anything up. That's exactly what they're doing. Uh, Logano, Blaney, Logano championships. No reason to change anything up. The only thing you might question is Sindrick, but he's got that family relation. No reason not to give him another uh, year, especially the fact that he's starting to come to his own, starting to find victory lane here and there as well. He just needs to step it up a little bit more frequently and grab that consistency that the other two teammates have. Yeah, and look, same thing. Forget it, too low, too low. Uh, but I would definitely put money on Austin Cindric. Absolutely, at 100 to 1. He is one of those, he's one of the few long shot drivers here. Okay, one of the few. Again, forget Van Gisbergen. Let's go to, I'm going to go all these drivers up here, all can win a championship. See, I don't even, I, I don't think Gibbs can. He, oh, he hasn't even damn won a race. So I think it just go to going to win one race and win a championship in the same year is forget it. Not, I mean, give me a hundred to one. I'll think about it. Not 22 to one. Forget that. So when, when you're doing this, you're saying, okay, so Van Gisbergen, no, Bubba, I, I wouldn't say no. I definitely take Bubba over Van Gisbergen. That's for sure. But the next guy, I mean, this is, I mean, how do we know Austin Sindrick just doesn't turn the corner this year? It's, everything is there for him to do that. So it would not be a surprise if Austin Sindrick went out and won, say, a couple of races and uh, was one of the sleepers going into the playoffs. He's a great road course racer. We know that from his Xfinity days as well as his early days in Cup. Um, he's a great super speedway racer. We know that from his days in Cup. Uh, last year, he won on uh, one of the intermediate ovals. I think it was Gateway, if I'm not mistaken. That should have been Blaney's victory. But nonetheless, he was there and able to to get that. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, no reason Blaney, with the success that his teammates have had, couldn't turn the corner in 25 and just suddenly be a breakout contender. All right. And then uh, a couple more to go here in Ford. We've got the Wood Brothers uh, and Front Row. So uh, let's uh, let's see um, where are we? all right. There's Wood Brothers. All right. So Wood Brothers is basically just Josh Berry replacing Harrison Burton. Burton's back to the Xfinity Series, even though Harrison Burton didn't wasn't he in the playoffs? Yes, because he won the 100th race for Wood Brothers, if I'm not mistaken, at the at a Super Speedway. Uh, okay, like was it Talladega or, I, I believe or so. Atlanta or one of those races? Okay, it was not Atlanta. It was okay. bigger Daytona. And was it the hundredth or, or something? I don't remember. A lot of wins for for Wood Brothers over the years. But uh, so winning a race uh, didn't uh, do anything for Harrison Burton uh, because uh, yeah, we all know. He so it's announced that he was leaving. I think the week, maybe two weeks before he actually won that race. So uh, it was bitter. Yeah. A bittersweet moment for him for sure and josh berry is another this is the second driver we've talked about from stewart haas so berry this is this is where he is going to reside now and he's uh he, and what do you think about that because josh berry had his moments uh especially early in the season but he kind of disappeared late um but uh and 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 he is also, is he with Ford for the first time? No, um, Stuart Haas. Uh, oh, Stuart Haas was with Ford. Okay. So, because I remember Josh Berry from uh, Hendrick. That's why. Yeah. He's, yeah, when he filled him for Chase Elliott. And I think he yeah. filled Alex Bowman maybe as well. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, Barry's a, a Ford guy. So this move makes sense. Okay. World Wood Brothers Penske the Alliance there they're diehard Ford uh, so that's you know makes sense for him and I think it's a play as well for a potential role with Penske proper in the future the way that those teams uh, collaborate together. All right. Now, what you don't see on this particular screen is front row, 
And that is, I guess, because what there's still, I know that no. So another Stuart Haas driver, Noah Gregson is going to go to front row and they're going to add a third driver as well, possibly. And Todd Gilliland stays. So you have Gregson basically what is Gregson replacing McDowell? They're all moving around. <laughs> so we don't know yet whether or not he's going to replace McDowell or be the third new third driver. Yeah. And we also have an idea that Zane Smith might, if there is that third <clears throat> driver, it might be Zane Smith. Yeah. It makes it a little bit confusing because Ty Gilliland is with the team and he's staying with the team. McDowell has been with the team. He's leaving. So Gilliland's moving into McDowell's ride, but is that really replacing McDowell or is Noah Gregson, the new driver coming into front row, quote unquote, the replacement for McDowell or not. And then what's going on with Zane Smith, who's not been confirmed yet as well. But I think uh, what is really hanging over the head of Front Row and uh, another team that we'll talk about when we get to Toyota is that that lawsuit about the uh, charters and um, what's going to happen. So it, it basically by the end of the month, there has to be resolution if there's not or there's something special that happens in January. Uh, Front row doesn't have a charter, so they have to compete as an open team, which means they have to qualify their way into every race. They would not be guaranteed a starting spot any week, and they're in the process, and they want to expand to three cars. So <clears throat> a lot of questions here with uh, front row. They've got movement still yet to come with that third car. They do want to expand to that third car. It looks like it could be Zane Smith, though, no though nothing's confirmed. And then, you know, what their level of ability to compete is going to be if they don't end up resolving that that lawsuit with uh, with NASCAR prior to the end of this month. That's really the deadline. And the whole deal with the charters, this is like this is this is like the first step towards potential major changes mm -hmm. in NASCAR. This is like a very important decision. This is this is like uh, the difference between, uh, you know, a monopoly and free agency. It's the opportunity for these drivers, the teams, and all of these, um, you know, industry personnel to finally feel like they have some control, and NASCAR doesn't have it all. Yep, exactly right. And a lot of sports go through this because. Yep. The, the, the teams are the ones that are shouldering a lot of the financial burden. Uh, we talked about this earlier in the season. Uh, same thing is true for, you know, other sports like the franchises in the NFL, et cetera, et cetera. So they want to make sure that they are getting rewarded appropriately for what they are putting on the line and the effort that they are, are putting out to build and maintain the series and, and keep that revenue flowing. So like you said, this uh, lawsuit, this decision is going to have a lot of implications as to the uh, worth, the value of a NASCAR charter in the future. And uh, Gregson, uh, unfortunately, things did not go their way at all with Stuart Haas last year. We know Gregson's got talent. He's definitely going to be the top dog at front row. He's the one that they really have to lead by example. He's the one that they're going to put all the resources to wouldn't that be the case well yeah i would think so um you know gilliland we talked about him quite a few times last year as well being very promising and showing mm -hmm. up speed um certainly gregson's the the more established of the bunch within the cup series uh so uh, yeah i'd probably put my i'd probably put my horses behind gregson to be honest with you at least initially okay now let's move on over to Toyota and we're going to start first of all with Joe Gibbs. So a lot of changes at Joe Gibbs. I mean, Joe is wondering if this, you know, if he's back in the NFL uh, <laughs> with this many changes, uh, with free agency, but, uh, even Denny Hamlin's going through changes. Yep. And, uh, Interesting story, of course, uh, regarding how surprised Denny was about these changes. Um, not sure exactly how it works, but bottom line is Denny Hamlin's going to have a new crew chief. Exactly right. And it sounds like it was a surprise to him as well. So 
um, interview immediately when the news broke or shortly thereafter, he wasn't didn't seem too pleased about it. Uh, it sounded like he found out as it happened, if not just uh, slightly before, wasn't consulted in the decision. And I think there, there are just some changes. You know, Gibbs, Ty Gibbs, um, didn't live up to the ex the potential. I think that we or a lot of people had for him in 24. So I think some changes uh, needed to be made. I think that was more of an organizational change. So um, Hamlin's former crew chief actually got promoted within the organization. So he's not leaving Gibbs, but he's not going to be Hamlin's um, crew chief. And so therefore, they've got to bring somebody in. And I think that's all designed as again, to help all the cars catch up to speed really Gibbs because, you know, Christopher Bell did did excellently last year, Hamlin had a run of really good form and wins. The one that was really lagging there um, was obviously Gibbs. So some changes need to happen in order to to boost that team. And I think that Denny Hamlin unfortunately played the victim on that. I'm not sure how that's going to play out in terms of his future with the team. Um, we'll see. Watch this space. So it's interesting because if you look at it, the only driver, I don't know if it's been filled yet, but the only driver that does not have a crew chief is Christopher Bell. Uh, which is, again, a little surprising. Um, again, Gail comes from Ty Gibbs. And then the other name that's new, of course, you see there is Chase Briscoe. So that's another driver that comes from Stuart Haas. And he's taken over for Truex. Bottom line, it's it's everything's the same with that team except the driver. Crew that chief, sponsor, everything. It's just instead of Martin Truex jumping in the car, you're going to get Chase Briscoe. That's correct. And in fact, because of Bell's success, there actually are no changes to Bell. So he's going to stick with Adam Stevens for 20. Okay. It's really, again, that shifting around of Gale to be able to bring in somebody for Gibbs and putting Gay, um, uh, uh, Hamlin's old, old crew chief further up in the organization to have a broader broader span, which hopefully thus improves Gibbs. As well. Okay. So, and then uh, again, yeah, Gibbs uh, gets his crew chief from the Xfinity series. And there you go. So that's uh, Joe Gibbs. Oh, let's take a look at the odds. So once again, uh, it's just way too early. <laughs> Bell is a uh, co-favorite right now. And then you got Hamlin. Uh, he's in the area where he normally is. Uh, and uh, we told you about Gibbs. Look, it's one thing to decide when you want to bet on Ty Gibbs this year to win a race. But uh, to, look, I mean, he's interesting enough. Gibbs is the fourth of the four drivers. There's a little Chase Briscoe sitting there at 18 to 1, 22 to 1. And I would uh, put money on Chase Briscoe over Ty Gibbs to win the championship. Uh, you got to win a race first. Let's win a race. And then we can start thinking about a championship the next year. Because uh, <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a driver in the Cup Series that's ever won a race for the first time in, in the same year he won his championship. I'm just going to guess that's never happened, probably for 40 or 50 years or something like that. So. But that's just me guessing. All right. Uh, there you go. So that's the championship. Those are the championship odds there for those guys. Now, uh, we also have uh, 23X. So let's see. We're 20, oh, it's not on there. All right. So 23X, we've got Reddick and Wallace, and they're coming back. And now there's a new driver, correct? Correct. And they're not on the screen because they are the other party in that charter dispute with NASCAR. So this is another team with success in 24 that wants to expand to a third team, but is having this dispute with NASCAR. So again, they're part of that lawsuit with Front Row Motorsports that we talked about. Uh, they do uh, or are expanding, um, want to, uh, but they may have to end up competing as, a, um, as, a, uh, as an open team. <clears throat> That'd be crazy. Yeah. Uh, so they got Redick, eight to one. And then now Wallace, as we mentioned before, Look, I have no problem if you want to put some money on Wallace as a long shot. Um, I don't think he's got the championship pedigree at this point, um, but he is 65 to 1. So at least you're getting 65 to 1. And Riley Herbst, you got uh, who's a multi driver winner in the Xfinity series, uh, is someone that part, he, he raced a few times in Cup last year. I forget which, with, yeah. with who, but. Uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be. He, will he be, will he be classified as a rookie? 
yes, he will be, well, NASCAR will officially announce that in January, but yeah, for all intents and purposes, Riley Herbst should be uh, part of the Rookie of the Year battle. I don't think he's done enough races in the series up until this point to be able to exclude himself from that or to have NASCAR exclude him from that, but he's bringing Monster Energy sponsorship. That means we'll have three Monster Energy cars on the grid next year, assuming that 23XI actually is able to compete um, on a weekly basis, as, as we said before with those charters having to qualify every single week may make it very difficult for them to be able to make and start every single race uh hopefully that get, gets resolved in the next couple of weeks here but yeah another team uh in a dispute with nascar that wants to expand wants to grow the sport bringing up riley herbst uh, with monster energy and that's the plan for 25 as it stands and then legacy uh you can see there john hunter name check eric jones uh, there were a couple other drivers, uh, but uh, this year it looks like it's just going to be both of them full time, and uh, we do we do not see a third driver there at this point. Not at this point, no. Um, Eric Jones uh, just expanded or extended, I should say, uh, his time with the team, signed a multi-year deal toward the you know th three quarters of the way through last season um so hopefully they can keep making progress they did make progress in 24 it'll be interesting to see what they can do in 25 but again they're one of those uh smaller teams uh, a little bit underfunded compared to the heavy hitters but hopefully they can sneak out some competitive runs throughout the season and i i should uh, also uh just uh let everybody know that uh the other driver that we did not talk about the other team we did not talk about uh in chevy was ricky stenhouse Mm -hmm. uh, who is 200 to one. He still, he remains, uh, with, um, I guess the old JTG formerly known as formerly known as, and, uh, it, uh yeah. Hayek motorsports, Ricky Stenhouse jr. So only one driver to one driver team. Correct. So that was uh, another Chevy driver that we figured we might as well throw in there. So there you go. Uh, we, we've shown you the early futures for the up for next year's uh, 2025 championship. We've got a long way to go. We have 11 months to go uh, before a champion is crowned. Uh, we mentioned Zane Smith, by the way, as a free agent who may, uh, as we mentioned, who may log, latch, latch onto a team. But Corey LaJoy is the other driver just to keep an eye on because uh, he might be the top free agent driver i guess available correct yeah i i think so um he, indications are that he might take the one remaining charter that's at rick Ware, but as we went through how, how many seats aren't announced yet right so that's really the only one that's left so i think that would be a good move for rick Ware if they're going to run a card next season to be able to take Corey lejoy Zane Smith, a lot of success in um, the truck series, but made the step up um, l last year to come to the cup series. Not as much though. Hosevar, Hosevar was arguably more successful. Uh, Corey LaJoy, I think has demonstrated his talent, especially on uh, super speedways more than enough times to have one of the teams take a chance on him. So I think in all likelihood, you'll probably see him end up at Rick Ware if Rick Ware ends up deciding to field a team full time. All right, there you go. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, we'll see how it all unfolds as we uh, come back in 2025, but we won't be long. Uh, it's not like we'll, we'll see you in April. Uh, we'll see you uh, either late January or very early in February because the Daytona 500 uh, is still the second week of February. Yes, and we have uh, Bowman Gray Stadium hosting the Bush Clash two weeks. Oh, that's right. Uh, Where is that? uh bowman gray where is that is that uh bowman gray stadium is that out west or south north carolina i couldn't remember which carolina north carolina carolina so it's coming back from the la coliseum thank goodness i think bowman <laughs> gray will be better uh we'll see oh so it's not going to be one of those little tiny thingamajiggies it, or the, it still will be it is a tiny thing in a jiggy, but it's just not LA. At least it's in the heart of NASCAR country and that's smart. Is an actual racetrack versus asphalt laid over a football field. Yeah. Over uh, <laughs> the LA Coliseum. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Well, and it's something different and uh, that's what you need. It was, it was good for a year. That's why they have to get carries it. If they, see, if they go to some place for a year or they change something for a year and it's popular, they always go back 
and then and nine times out of ten it ain't so it, it's not new anymore so it's just it the numbers go down and then they all right well it's good so at least they've gone somewhere else and they're not dumb enough to think that uh well it was just a blip uh these because it's la i mean it, they don't even show up for the baseball and football i think the tickets were free last year free you can okay you can make money doing that that's a good business uh model free tickets mm. all right so anyway uh that's nascar's problem not ours uh next year 2025 will be here before you know it we are going to talk about the entire season with our next show uh that's going to include uh rehashing the odds and everything else we'll get our predictions that's coming in uh, as well probably on our next show uh we will talk f1 or nascar uh if anything big happens including if, if something significant happens here and again, we may know this when with the charters. Uh, hopefully by the end of the month. That's the okay. deadline out there right now, though realistically, anytime before they get to Florida uh, or Daytona, but hopefully by the end of December here. Okay. So we might be back. And again, if we're going to be back at all before we do a pre season preview show, it'll just be for a few minutes, just to have a little bit of a news update. And uh, you, when do you go back uh, to talking uh, on uh, Rotowire? Uh, that'll pick up right with the Bush clash. So, um, very early February, I think that's the first weekend in February, if I'm not mistaken. And then, uh, you know, roughly a week after that, it's really two weeks, but one weekend after that, uh, they'll be racing at Daytona for the 500. Yeah. Because we're, cause that's the thing is that even though the 500 is in the second week of February on the 16th, uh, the clash is on the second in, like you said, Bowman gray stadium. So we're probably going to be on the air in late January. That's when we'll be on the air to kind of get you ready. And then maybe we'll have our preseason preview show the week after. Uh, and then we'll get started with our Daytona 500 preview, probably the week, of course, of the Daytona 500. So uh, look for us late January. Don't forget, of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is where we're going to have all of our NASCAR coverage for 2025, including qualifying updates like we did last year. So uh, we'll hope to see everybody again in 2025. Uh, CJ, appreciate it. Uh, this is uh, this will wrap things up because uh, we don't have to talk F1 for a while because they don't start until what, April? Yeah, late March, April uh, would be about the earliest you'd start thinking about Formula One. All right. So uh, it's pretty much going to be NASCAR for the next, uh, for at least the first couple of months in 2025 for CJ. We're doing on Great De Palma. We'll see you next time in 2025.